Hey everyone, Courtney here, clinician and patient with MECFS fibromyalgia. I wanted to make a quick video today to talk about vagal nerve stimulators. I believe this is one of the most interesting potential treatments yet for post-viral conditions. Vagal nerve stimulators aren't new. They've primarily only been used as a surgical implant. For this indication, the devices are FDA approved for a handful of conditions. We now have non-invasive external devices on the market, which can deliver an electrical stimulus to the vagus nerve. Now, what is the vagus nerve and why on earth would we want to electrically stimulate it? The vagus nerve is the longest nerve in the body and it plays a, a role in virtually every system of the body. It's a very important sensor for when we're sick with a viral infection or a bacterial infection. The vagus nerve essentially tells the brain to slow down and rest when we're sick and that's why we feel tired and fatigued. It also acts like a information superhighway, and it runs from the digestive tract to the brain, sending messages above and below. Dysfunction of this nerve, including persistent infection in the vagus nerve, is a suspected culprit in post-viral conditions like long-haul COVID, MECFS, fibromyalgia, and POTS, or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It follows that electrical stimulation of the nerve can help reset its function and potentially help a whole host of symptoms that are related to these conditions. Numerous clinical trials have already been performed and show the promise of this concept. If you want to learn more about the results of those clinical trials, click on the link below to a blog post I wrote on this topic. Here's a basic rundown. External vagal nerve stimulation in clinical trials has been shown to reduce inflammation, improve sleep, improve blood flow to the brain, increase neurotransmitters in the brain, and help improve the stress response system. Sign me up. All of these are critical aspects of post-viral conditions. So how can we access the vagus nerve externally? The answer is via the ear, particularly the tragus of the ear which is this little button in the front of the ear. Research from cadaver studies has shown that the left tragus is more densely populated with neurons that travel to the vagus nerve compared to the right. So when using a external vagus nerve simulator, we wanna hook it up to the left tragus. My first attempt at vagal nerve stimulation was making a homemade unit with my simple TENS unit. TENS units are very affordable. They cost about 50 bucks and they normally have two channels. You only need one channel for vagal nerve stimulation. So there's two electrodes. One electrode will be the sticky pad, which you can just attach to the back of the shoulder. The other end, we need to add an ear clip, which costs a couple bucks. You just simply attach the ear clip to the tragus and turn on the TENS unit, and it will go for about 15 or 20 minutes of electrical stimulation. Now I use this every day for several weeks and unfortunately, I didn't notice any change in any of my symptoms of fatigue or pain. There's a few reasons why I think this is. For one, you can already see this isn't very secure or stable or precise. I think it's too large for my ear and it's not a good fit. Because of this, we can't deliver the stimulation precisely and we'll have off-target stimulation. So what would happen when I use this is I, was de I would develop pain in my teeth and sensitivity that would continue even after I took the device off. I think this was because I was stimulating, in addition to vagal neurons, also the trigeminal nerve, which sits above, in front of the tragus, not the intended target. I'm really uncomfortable. Another reason why I think this didn't work is most TENS units don't allow you to set a precise frequency. You can only set a range of frequencies. Remember, these are made for muscle fibers. They send stimulation to make fibers contract and relax like a massage device. That's not what we want when we stimulate nervous tissue. With vagal nerve stimulators, we want more of a, a consistent, steady stimulation over time. You can't really do that with a TENS unit, at least not with my unit. So this didn't work for me, unfortunately, although it's a much cheaper option. It's possible, but some of these problems need to be addressed before you try it. Determined to reap the benefits of vagal nerve stimulation, I bit the bullet and purchased a NeuroSim device. Now these are currently available in the EU and in the UK without a prescription, and I imagine very soon they'll also be available in the US. Now when you look up this device, 
I know, the price tag will make your eyes water. It's very expensive. I was very hesitant to even consider this because of the price tag, but then I learned more about it and was happy to put it on my charge card. So think about it like this. External vagus nerve stimulators in the US, the ones that a doctor would buy for their office, can cost two to three thousand dollars. The NeuroSim device has been used in multiple clinical trials already. It's safe, and the researchers are so confident in this device that they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you really don't have much to lose by trying it out for a month. And if it doesn't work for you, you can just send it back for a refund. So another way to look at it is if you use it for a year then it's less than two euros a day for a treatment. So when you think about it in these ways, maybe it's a little easier to spend the money for it. I've been using mine for a few weeks now and will definitely be keeping it. Um, the results have been astounding. And I'll talk more about that in a minute, but first I wanna unbox it and show you how it works. So it comes in this nice felt travel case. And the first thing you'll notice is it's got a very sleek, pocket size design. When it arrives, you'll have to charge it up. There's a port at the bottom with a charging cable that is just a standard USB charging cable. It charges really fast within 15 or 20 minutes and the battery life is very long lasting. Let's look now at the ear clip. This also goes in the bottom. And you'll notice right away, the clip is small and the wire is curved. This allows for a good fit over the ear. Also, the conducting surfaces are very, very tiny, so you get nice, precise electrical stimulation delivered. What I like to do before I use this is wet my ear a little bit with some water, and that will improve the electrical condu conduction, and it makes it a little bit more comfortable. So it slips just over your ear and clips onto the tragus. Compared to our TENS unit, you can see it's very stable. I can move around, I can walk around, it's not gonna fall off my ear. It's very, very comfortable to use. It's also easy to use. So to turn it on, you hold down the power button until you see the lights come up. The first thing it asks you to do is set the timer. This is a bit of a question mark. The manual that comes with the device doesn't give you any information about how long or how frequently you should use the device. So what I did is I went to the clinical trials and picked a similar protocol for fatigue. And that was 35 minutes once per day. That's what I've been using and it's working fine for me. You're free to experiment with it and do it more often um, or less or as you like. So then you press the large button to start, but first you need to set the power by using the plus and minus keys. So do this slowly until you start to feel a buzz under your ear. For me, I don't start to feel anything until I reach about 20 or 25 power. Now you don't want it to be uncomfortable. You have to be able to withstand it for 30 minutes, but you also don't want it to be too light. So somewhere in between uh, that's comfortable for you. You can always adjust the frequency during the treatment to turn it up or down as you go along. You press the start button and off you go. So this is another option for vagal nerve stimulation. I'm incredibly impressed with this device so far. I'm also really impressed with the clinical trial data on this device so far. It's worth checking out. I wanna talk more about how this device is improving my ME-CFS and fibromyalgia symptoms, but I wanna give it a little more time and then I will make another video with specific details about how this device is affecting my symptoms. So stay tuned for that, like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in that video.